Hello everyone. Today I wanted to showcase and share my experiences in Monogame. I've been working in 3D and 3D 2D mixture. Got this scene, got this scene. I'm gonna show you a little bit about those. Feel free to skip ahead. I first want to reintroduce myself as well as talk a little bit about Monogame. So I am Zephyr or Zephyrus Green. That's not my real name. It's my GitHub account for programming and my channel, of course. Years ago, I modded Salt and Sanctuary. I created the desalinated framework, a data-oriented framework to adjust the game and mod it. It is no longer under construction. It is considered fully complete and released, and it only works with older versions of Salt and Sanctuary. But from working on desalinated, I was able to be a playtester for Salt and Sacrifice, become part of the community for Salt and Sanctuary as well, and I have since been hired as a contractor to work maintenance on Salt and Sanctuary. In Salt and Sanctuary, I have fixed over 50 bugs and added multiple quality of life features, uh, such as screen shake toggle. I have also been able to create a gameplay balance option, or game mode option, the enhanced combat. This mode uh, is heavily inspired by Desalinated, conversations with James, the original developer, as well as a dozen or so community members uh, that play tested it or had other inputs. It's been a fun time. I am moving forward a little bit to work on my own projects, and so this channel is going to evolve a little bit. It's going to still be focused around modding, programming, game development, but also showing off and streaming or pre recording uh, gameplay. Uh, a game I plan on showing off soon is Bastion. It is another game that is built in Monogame. Let's talk about Monogame. So Monogame is a framework. It is not an engine. A lot of games have been built in Monogame. The precursor is XNA. Monogame is a re-implementation of XNA. We've got some Axiom Verge, of course, Salt and Sanctuary and Salt and Sacrifice, uh, Celeste, Stardew Valley, a lot of games in here. Most of these are going to be 2D, though. 3D is a little bit trickier. Monogame is not an engine. It is almost entirely just code. So if you know how to code, it's maybe even preferred, but aren't really big into just sitting down and building everything yourself. Other engines may be better. So it is cross-platform. I have personally used a little bit of the Android uh, templates. Uh, works pretty well and it is open source. It is also completely free. There is no subscriptions, nothing. So if you want to use Monogame, you don't have to worry about copyrights or payments or anything like that. So that's Monogame. Outside of the code, it is mostly just a pipeline and you don't even have to use it. Completely optional. I prefer it at the time, at this time, but you can do what you want. So this is the pipeline tool, the content pipeline tool. Uh, you just import folders of data, typically 2D textures and 3D objects. So the DAE format here is straight out of Blender. Um, you can also use the FBX format, and it can also import them as FBX, which is what I am doing. Uh, these seem to be working pretty well. Um, you can also change uh, default scale and rotation if you have some rotation issues with your models, which is not uncommon, but either way. Um, but that's it. That's pretty much all Monogame looks like. There is very little boilerplate, uh, which can be a good and bad thing. If you don't want to deal with a lot of pre-installed features, that's great. That's how I am. Um, I have my own structure to my content. So here is my code. Uh, my structure is basically just a director that controls scenes. Got two 3D scenes that I was showing off earlier. Close this. And we've got a little box guy, and he can move around. And we got tractor that can just kind of move around a little bit. Okay, let's get into it. Um, the 3D stuff while you're actually here. There is not a default camera object. 
There are some extensions, such as Monogame Extended or various engines built on top of Monogame, that may give you some of these tools for free. You don't have to build them entirely. Um, but let's go over this. So each camera or a camera has a, a location it's facing and a location it's at. And I'm going to jump over to Paint here, show you here. So this is our camera right here. And this is where it's facing. Um, the angle of this is our point of view, or field of view. And these are our near, near plane and far plane, which are cutoff points for the camera to call out visual objects. And then if you're using a perspective camera, there are different kinds of cameras. If you're using a perspective camera, things farther away will look and orient themselves uh, on a focal point. They will shrink and change shape and stuff like you'd expect. So our camera is facing towards this point. It's located at this point and has an upward direction here. This is going to come into play when we set up our code. Uh, this is just a 2D representation in a real camera. We're going to have a full 3D representation of this little uh, box shape. So let's go into the code and I'll describe a little bit here. So we've got, again, the camera position and target. So this is X, Y, and Z where X is your horizontal, Y is your vertical, and Z is your depth. Not everything uses the same vertical and depth, so pay attention to that if you're familiar with Blender, Unity, or Unreal. You're going to have different 3D uh, orientations. But in, in Monogame, depth is Z uh, by default. Uh, you could probably change that in some ways, depending on how you want to set up your camera. Um, so I've set the camera here to just about 25 meters out, and it's just facing a zero point, which effectively creates a center point on the screen. Go down here, and we're going to create a look or view matrix using our cam target, our target camera position, and that up arrow I was showing earlier. Um, it'll do the math for you. Just insert these three vectors, and you get the view matrix. And that's generally kind of where your camera is oriented in the world and where it's looking at, the rotation of the camera. Then we've got perspective, field of view. We've got a degrees uh, here. So this is your field of view. You might want this to be large. You might want this to be small. Um, You've got your aspect ratio, what you're expecting to do. You're going to have to control this yourself because everyone's going to have a different aspect ratio to their, their computer if, uh, if you're making something on PC. And then this is the near plane and the far plane. Uh, this is the near plane here, far plane here. And this allows it so that if you're zooming in or moving around, you're not going to get stuck in a wall staring at this space. Um, so it'll cull out uh, the meshes as they get too close to the camera. So we do need a third matrix here to actually draw. That's the world matrix. The world matrix represents the position of an object in the world. So again, we've got some defaults here. We've got a forward location, an upward location. But I am grabbing the tractor's location and kind of converting it to a 2D aspect here, because that's what I'm kind of working with in a half D relationship. So it's got a static or unchanging D location. Um, and then you got your tractor X, your tractor Y. Um, models, they're imported through that importer. Got a model here. That's it. it. It just stores all the information. You may have to mess with some import stuff, but uh, you can go through each mesh and each effect and then set those three matrices. That view matrix, which is the camera facing matrix, world matrix, which is the object location matrix, and the projection matrix, which is more of your field of view. In this tractor example, we are updating the world matrix just slightly with this one second custom animation where it moves the shovel's location just slightly downward and rotates it uh, up and back uh, 50 degrees. Oh, if we jump back over here, we can see how it's rotating around 
the x-axis of the shovel. Now you can do this with bones as well, and it's probably preferred to be done with bones, um, but this is just me experimenting with things. So that's how that looks. Then if we jump over to the cube scene, got this little guy, as shown before. Uh, this is not a true collision. There is nothing actually going on here other than some basic uh, code. But just like in 2D, your direction of draw matters. So if we jump over to the cube scene, we've got multiple cubes here. We're drawing them to the screen. We're setting those three matrices. But we are drawing this box texture last, which puts it on top of the 3D scene. If we were to move this as 2D, it would draw it in that order. Um, and this project has a, a, a hotkey for F3. You can toggle between the two scenes with F3. So draws the character, the box, behind the 3D. So if you wanted to make foreground, background, you do it basically the same way as you would for, for 2D. The 2D and 3D orientations aren't going to line up perfectly, and that's going to relate to how you set up your camera, though. So that is kind of it. I just want to talk about some basic uh, situations you want to look out for in mixing the two. So if you do mix the two, you need to reset the depth stencil state. It gets set to none when sprite batch is called. Sprite batch is used for 2D. And so you don't really have to worry about this too much in 3D unless you actually want to change it. But if sprite batch is being used, such as in the cube scene here, you need to reset that. You can change your pull direction, and you can kind of change stuff in here. You can actually uh, attach to bones and do stuff with the bones here as well. And uh, Monogame is pretty compatible with things straight out of Blender. So that is my example. Thanks for making it this far. And uh, I'll keep you posted with, uh, with more tutorials, demos, and uh, my own personal growth, as well as uh, game videos as I move forward with this channel. Thanks for watching.